So a lot of you out there watching this swing will think there's nothing wrong with this right foot movement in the downswing. I mean, there isn't if you enjoy shanking and slicing the ball, but if you're not one of those questionable individuals that enjoy hitting those type of shots, I'd suggest we go and we fix that movement so we have a better chance of hitting straight shots and not out the hosel. So, I'm Jonathan Chan with J Chan Golf. Let's start right into it. So, excessively lifting that trail heel in the downswing. Now, that's a horrible move for the recreational golfer to do because that will cause a whole host of problems. So, whether that's starting the downswing with that heel lifting, whether that's mid downswing, or whether that's even just before impact, don't matter, it's still pretty poor of a movement. Why is that though? Because if we are lifting that trail heel, the right knee will start to shoot forward. Now, right knee, of course, what's connected to that? The right hip. Now, right hip's gonna move forward. So okay, if the right hip also moves forward, the right hand side of my body is gonna move forward as well. So of course, what's attached to my right hand side of the body, my right arm, what's that holding onto? The golf club. So that is also gonna move really out in front of us. So you can see, if I do this as a golfer who does it late in the downswing, I could be coming down on an awesome path, could be coming down real neutral. And if I do this, you can see, whoop, I've gone right outside the ball line and I am gonna hosel the daylights out of that golf ball. So it diverges the club and brings it on the outside of the ball line. I've seen many times in lessons of players, even on into out paths coming in the downswing, and then their right heel will start lifting off. Maybe they're trying to drive their right side into that golf ball, which a lot of players are trying to do. And then they start diverging it out and they go out to win last minute. They'll have an into out path for three quarters of the downswing, but then if they were measured on a track man or any other launch monitor, he'll be reading that they're out to win. It's because they're lifting up their trail heel and then they'll actually be properly slicing it. So not like push slicing for an inside golfer, an out to win slice. So crazy stuff. If we want to have a really consistent and easy downswing, that can't be lifting up. If we were, because there are tour players who do this, we would have to employ a lot of side bend to be able to counteract that outward move this has on the golf club. We would have to side bend a lot to get it back there, which is what we see with golfers like Justin Thomas do, for example. He does that movement a lot, but he also has a lot of side bend, but somehow in his athleticism, still manages to rotate. Let's talk about what we need to do here and not why it's so bad of a movement. So what do we want to do? We want to be able to keep this trail heel a little bit more on the ground for longer in the downswing. We can have the heel come up a little bit, but I'd rather that happen from a different way rather than just vertically raising it. So if I'm coming down the downswing, I'd want to do what's called banking the trail foot to where you can see how this trail foot is rolling onto the left hand side of the foot in this fashion here. So that will be a byproduct of good shifting and good rotation. That move will happen naturally, but you can see that doesn't negatively affect my club path doesn't negatively affect how my club is moving in relationship to the ball line. So I'm gonna hit the ball straighter and I'm also gonna hit the ball with a better contact off the face. So no random shanks where we're gonna to have to hit another ball because shanks always go out of bounds, don't they? So banking the trail foot. So very much so, very low to the thing I've just said that you've got to do. You've got to rotate better, you've got to shift better. Way easier said than done, right? but we can make sure that we're doing a drill for a feedback orientated to keep this down. Let's do that. So that's why a golf club has magically appeared behind me. So all we need to do with preferably like a wedge or something, we can see this is my 50 degree. I'm just putting this underneath my trail heel. So now this is underneath my trail heel. I just need to keep it there until post impact and then I can let it go it all underneath there the entire time until that movement there after the golf ball. So if I do the bad move, that trail heel lifts up early. I'm going to know about it straight away. It's going to drop down. I'm going to feel it drop down. I'm going to hear it. That's why I asked to do it with a wedge because you will hear it dropping the ground way louder than you would do with like a seven iron, for example. Seven iron with a loft on it will just drop down slightly. You won't be able to hear a thing. Probably wouldn't even notice. So wedge underneath my trail heel and I want to drop it post impact. So post impact. There we go. So that's our goal. What I don't want to do is I don't want to do 
one of these two things. So like we said, I don't want to drop it really early. I don't know how I managed to still hit that fairly central from that. But you can see that dropped fairly much in the middle of my downswing. And I also don't want to do this. Keep it there the entire time because I'm not going to be turning. I want to drop it post impact. If we can do that, we will be having more of that banking movement of the trail foot. This is a good thing for a lot of golfers just to practice in general, because it's very, very rare I ever see from lessons that a golfer does that quite well. Now, like we said, it's a byproduct, banking the trail foot, this movement of rotation and shifting, but we can train the movement to happen through self-organization with a drill like that with the club underneath the foot. So I kind of recommend all golfers to have a little practice with this. The more drills you can have a little practice with just to understand the body movement, the better, because that increases your golfing IQ. So, absolutely, let's do this. And then we'll not be hitting here and we'll not be slicing the golf ball, if it's our problem, of course. So if you like this video, of course, click that like button if you want more golf instruction, just like this. Hit that subscribe button, hit the bell button too to be notified every time I put out a video. So, bank that trail foot and you'll be playing better golf.